Welcome back to American Latino TV. All right, the rest of the show features the stories of incredible Latinas, but let's take a little break from that theme and sneak in the story of Rodrigo Prieto and his rise through the ranks of Hollywood's best directors of photography. These are the guys that are actually running the six-figure piece state-of-the-art cameras. Now, I've been on several movie sets, and I can tell you that the director of photography is often the hardest working guy on set. Not only do they have to be a creative visionary, but they are also the ones hunched over, looking through the camera lens all day. And Rodrigo is one of the best, as he shows, DPing on Martin Scorsese's stylized blockbuster, The Wolf of Wall Street. Take a look. Brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. My name is Rodrigo Prieto, and I was the director of photography of The Wolf of Wall Street. The Wolf of Wall Street is based on a memoir written by Jordan Belfort uh, about his uh, days in, in, in Wall Street as a broker. And um, it's a pretty extreme movie. It really goes into the lifestyle of these guys. My name is Jordan Belfort. The year I turned 26, I made $49 million, which really pissed me off because it was three shy of a million a week. And this movie is a dark comedy, so finding the right tone, the right balance of the mood you know, with the lighting, where we want the film to be realistic, dramatic, extreme as well, and funny, you know, because the movie is very funny. Essentially, you know, they want to give us free reign to explore that dark side and, and um, not do a sort of G-rated version of this movie, and they want to, you know, give us the budget to sort of uh, show the epic expanse of this world in the 90s in, in, in America. Nobody knows if the stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in circles. You know what a fugazi is? No. Fugazi. It's a uh, fake. Hey, fugazi, fugazi. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a f fairy dust. I was born and raised in Mexico City. When I was a kid, I used to do Super 8 movies uh, with monsters and spaceships. Every year we did a, a movie or two, and, and I just continued doing that, and one day I found out that there was such a thing as film school. The last movie I did in Mexico was Amores Perros. Amores Perros was kind of bold for that time in Mexico, at least. I remember the, the producers, when they saw the tests of what the way we wanted to shoot the film, with a process and the developing of the negative that created extreme contrast and grain, and the image has a lot of texture, and they felt they were worried that it would look like a cheap movie. I think that called the attention of, of many people and uh, led to some other projects that I did later, 8 Mile, 25th Hour with Spike Lee, things like that. I've also been lucky because the movies I'd done before in Mexico were such a different style, like Frida, or uh, my first American movie was Original Sin, and those are completely different styles. So just a little bit, Mr. Yeah. So don't really change it too. I don't think that being from a specific region in the world makes you have to only understand and only deal with issues of that region. I think that there's that tendency with a, a lot of uh, Hispanic uh, directors and cameramen like myself who um, we've had now the opportunity to spread and to you know, deal with other issues from different countries and cultures. And I think that's exciting. Set, set, and background! And action! 